Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and I am right in the middle of my two-week challenge using the new MacBook Pro as my daily computer. Now, if you missed my previous two-week challenge videos, I will link to the playlist all down below. Now, with that being said, I wanna go ahead and talk about my experience with the brand new touch bar, along with my experiences with the trackpad as well, using that force touch. Now, I know the force touch isn't a new feature, however, it is new to me, and a new feature that I can use since I have never used a MacBook before. So with that being said, let's get into some of the ways that I have used the touch bar and also the trackpad and also see if they're actually useful. Also as a side note, I will unfortunately be able to attend CES this year, one of the first times in a little while I cannot go. Uh, I will actually do have a conflict in Orlando, I'll be in a wedding, so pretty excited about that. Uh, with that being said, this will give me a chance to actually travel with this MacBook. So I'm going to bring it on the plane. The trip's only a couple days, uh, so a quick turnaround, but it'll allow me to actually experience traveling with it using adapters, dongles, all that good stuff. So expect more videos once I get back from that trip. Now, to begin, I was honestly pretty skeptical about how much I would genuinely use this top touch bar. And this touch bar is not static. It's actually dynamic depending on what, what specific app you have open it and what you're actually doing within your laptop. Now, with that being said, there are also settings to customize it. You'll see by default, there's no function keys like a standard keyboard. Also, you'll see there's an escape button right here, which I've kind of noticed. I don't necessarily need to press the actual button itself. I can kind of miss it a little bit, which actually extends it just a little bit. But anyways, to activate function keys, you just press this function button and then go ahead and use your F5, any of those. So with that being said, you can actually customize on a per app basis if you want these function keys to show up by default. Those of you that asked in my last video, this would be the marble slick wrap I've added to my MacBook. I'll link to it down below if interested. Now to change these settings, all you have to do is go into system preferences, keyboard, and change over to shortcuts right here, and you'll see function keys. You just add any specific apps where you want those function keys. So for example, if I go to utilities, I might want the terminal app to use those function keys by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to terminal, the terminal app, open it on up, and when I do so, you'll notice up at the top here, those function keys show up by default. Now with that being said, what if you want to actually access the touch bar's other features? Now all you really have to do is press that function button and it goes back to your main bar. This top bar actually is called the control strip. So this menu is a control strip and that is actually able to be customized. So again, back in keyboard settings, you go to customize control strip. And this is pretty interesting the way that they have chosen to actually allow you to modify this. I don't mind it by any means. So what you do is use your mouse and you'll see I can move down and actually hover over these four icons. And yes, you can only have four icons. So you can click once you're down there and bring it on up if you do not want the volume slider there, for example, or you can actually add all of these various ones such as notification center, show desktop, anything like that. And of course you don't have to have four, you can have as many as one or zero. Actually you can get rid of all of them if you don't like them. And the four that I use is Siri, Launchpad, Volume, and Brightness. I really like to have Volume and Brightness right here to quick toggle and you can tap on it if you'd like to and it'll extend it open. However, very easy, you can just press and hold and drag to actually change your volume and brightness. Very simple. Now you can also extend these, the control strip where you have play, pause, skip, um, and then of course your keyboard brightness shows up as well. You can go ahead and go into your all windows page or open up your launch pad once more and change brightness. And to be honest, I've used the volume and brightness slider on the touch bar the most of any shortcut. As I mentioned, the touch bar changes on a per app basis and the developer can actually customize uh, various things about it. Now you'll see in Safari, you can quickly swap tabs. Very simple to do. You can add a new tab and search as well. However, you can actually customize this. All you really have to do is while you're in an app hit view and customize search bar comes up and you'll see while in Safari, they give you these various options to add down to your touch bar in the exact same way that you customized it previously. So you can kind of customize everything to your liking. And of course, the developer needs to add this as well. I find that I kept the search and new tab button. However, you can add a share button if you'd like to, your quick history button, favorites bar, or autofill as well. Now, interestingly enough, they added a feature where you could take a screenshot of the touch bar. To do so, you hit shift command six, and you'll see it opened up a touch bar screenshot on my desktop. Now, with that being said, I don't see myself ever using this feature or ever needing it. I don't exactly know why someone would ever use this now, but it is there. So with that being said, you can also select a file. Maybe on my desktop, I selected a file and they have a quick share button, which I think is kind of cool. And then it loads up various apps 
that you can quickly share it with. So I do really like that quick share feature. One quick feature that I really do like is media scrubbing where you can actually just kind of skip fast forward or rewind very quickly while you're watching a video. So you see I'm watching a YouTube video and you can see the time next to my finger that shows up and you can quickly scrub between this specific video. Now with that being said, if I go into a different app, let's say I open up system preferences to change something, I can have this app open and I'm changing any specific preference and I press this, you'll see this extra fifth icon in the upper right hand corner pops up. If I tap it in the background, you'll see it shows Safari and I can actually quickly scrub through that video specifically. So that does not go away while your video is playing, which is a really nice feature because if you're doing something in double apps, you don't necessarily need to uh, click back into your video to skip through it. The touch bar also offers text prediction, which I pretty much haven't used just yet. Um, I kind of forget it's there at times just because I can type much quicker on my keyboard than I can on my phone, for example. And of course, you have your emoji bar, which once again, I have not used quite yet because I usually don't use emojis in general unless I'm on my phone. So I pretty much never use emojis while on my laptop. The oversized trackpad on the MacBook also offers a force click option, which brings in another menu of options and quick shortcuts to do. For example, you can quickly rename folders and files by using it, and it's actually pressure sensitive. So you just have to push in a little bit harder. So you'll see if I just tap on the icon, it's just going to select it, but if I push a little bit harder, it will bring up that rename option. And on a per app basis, the, you can do different things. For example, you can view more of a calendar event. And then of course, if I go into Safari, there are some features as well. One of them is actually why I specifically have kind of stuck with Safari for now, is to be honest, when you can actually press down and force click on a link, it will bring it up in a very in a smaller menu and you can kind of preview that specific link, which I've used all the time. And if you actually click on it, it's going to open it up in a new tab very simply. So you can, if you're kind of debating whether you want to open a link, that's a really, really nice and quick, easy addition and a nice feature to have within the browser. Another very simple use of force clicking is to actually look up a word. You can just define the word by force clicking and just push a little bit harder. Like I mentioned, you'll see dictionary thesaurus. You can also click over to Wikipedia maps and Twitter shows up as well. Now, another really cool one is when you actually force click on something that looks like a date and time, you press and force click on it and you can add a new calendar event right away, which is really cool that you have that option. Now with the bar down at the bottom, with these apps that are on the right side here, you can force click and it's going to act as a right click. Now, if you have multiple apps open, uh, multiple windows open of a specific app, such as Finder, for example, and you force click on it, it's going to show a preview of all of the various windows that you have open. So if I go ahead and go into one, it's going to minimize that, all the other ones, and go into that specific one. Now, going to documents, maybe opening up a quick uh, video. So when we actually uh, go to fast forward, now, of course, that touch bar is going to bring up an option as well. However, you can also use force clicking and you can customize how fast that it's actually going to uh, speed through. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna zoom in. Now, watch how uh, pressure sensitive it is. So two times, I'm gonna click in a little bit harder, five, 10, 30, 60. So those are your options. And it has a little bit of a, uh, a vibrating feedback to kind of feel like another level of clicking. And it's really cool, actually. It's really very intuitive, in my opinion. All in all, I do say the touch bar is pretty useful if you can remember all the various shortcuts that it does offer. Now, when you're looking at your display, you really don't look down at the touch bar, so sometimes I forget that it's even there, and I also forget all the customizations that you can make to it. With that being said, it's just gonna take a little bit more time to learn, and I think if I continuously force myself to use it, I can see it allowing me to be a little bit more productive. But anyways, that's it. That's my one week check-in so far and that two week challenge, a few more videos to come culminating in that final review. So stay tuned for that. Click that subscribe button so you're notified. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching.